In our world, there are various buried secrets. Think about all the secret activities that may occur underground. The testing, the experimentation, the construction. Alongside that, we have secrets about our history, still buried along with what actually existed in history. Now, if you have been paying attention for the past few years, you may have noticed that there have been a significant number of reports put out claiming that there is not one, but several anomalies buried beneath the ice of Antarctica. So far, we have been looking at these anomalies as beacons of wonder. And when you think about it, over the years, there have been quite a few stories and many claims about what is there. There have been explorers, scientists, engineers, pilots, military, tourists have been there. But not everywhere. Let's keep in mind that this is a continent, not a country, not an island, but a full-scale continent packed in ice. And it is big. Sometimes we imagine places like this and our brains tend to shrink the scale because the whole place looks pretty much the same. It would be extremely difficult for you or I to identify a random location in Antarctica from an image. Unless there was a very distinct looking structure, man-made or natural. Today we are not here to discuss any one particular anomaly. Today I want us to take a step back and look at this continent and its happenings as a whole. What has been truly confirmed and what has not. Let's make a list. Let us map this out and see if we can make better sense of the big picture. Ladies and gentlemen, the ice of Antarctica is melting. That has been confirmed. And it has been melting for quite some time. There is land beneath the ice. What rests on its surface mostly has yet to be confirmed. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Because they know they cannot possibly hide what is truly there without that ice. And in what will be the very warm year of 2021, it feels like the truth is beginning to surface. Antarctica is about five and a half million square miles. That is about the size of the United States and Mexico combined. About 97% of Antarctica is covered in a sheet of ice, close to 5.3 million square miles. On average, the thickness of the ice sheet is around 2,160 meters deep, or 1.3 miles. The thickest part of the ice is around three miles deep. 90% of all the ice on the planet is this ice sheet. 70% of all the world's fresh water is this ice sheet. Now again, the average thickness of this ice sheet is 2,160 meters deep. With that said, the tallest building in the world right now is 828 meters tall. That means that if there were buildings on the surface of Antarctica that are that tall, those buildings would still be buried almost a mile deep below the surface of the ice. It is said that this ice is millions of years old. So if there is any artificial structure beneath the ice, either that structure is that old or the ice is that young. Beneath the ice, Antarctica is divided between East and West Antarctica and the Antarctic Peninsula. West Antarctica is mostly below sea level. East Antarctica is mostly above sea level. 
the ice sheet actually bridges east and west Antarctica. So with this layout, you can understand that you can't really explore Antarctica on foot. You can't really explore it in a land vehicle. Even with a helicopter or plane, you are flying over ice that is anywhere from a mile to three miles deep. So any artificial structure you see sticking out of the ice is either very massive or it may have been constructed or placed on the surface of the ice hundreds or even thousands of years ago. There are three major mountain ranges in Antarctica. On the Antarctic Peninsula Cordillera, in what's known as Graham and Palmer land, there is the Antarctic Andes, which runs the full length of the peninsula. South of the Antarctic Andes is the Ellsworth Mountains, where there is the Sentinel Mountain Range with the highest peaks on the continent. To the east of these two mountain ranges is the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, which divide East and West Antarctica. Now, because most of Antarctica is under ice, you have what are called subglacial lakes, which form by the pooling of liquid water beneath the ice and above the bedrock. There are at least 400 of these lakes. Lake Vostok is one of these lakes that is known to be under the Russian Vostok Station at the southern pole of cold, which is one of the largest subglacial lakes in the world. There are several rivers, which are technically meltwater streams, the largest being the Onyx River, stretching 19 miles westward through Wright Valley and into Lake Vonda, between the Olympus and Asgard mountain ranges. There are 138 known volcanoes in Antarctica. Many are active, some dormant. Most of them are subglacial, but you still have glacial volcanism. Earthquakes are not that often, but when they do occur, they can be violent. Ice quakes occur much more often. Most of the stations that detect seismic activity are along the edge of the continent, all but four. There are 70 permanent research stations across the continent, with the presence of 32 countries. It was the Antarctic Treaty that set the law of the land, which ensures Antarctica stays in pristine condition for future generations to enjoy, or when the Northern Hemisphere is no longer habitable. So what about these stations they have scattered across Antarctica? Well, this started with the Brockerink's hut in Cape Adair in 1889, and in 1902 with the Almond House. This house was put together by a Scottish expedition crew using materials found around Lorry Island, which today still stands as sort of a monument. Since 1902, several countries have visited Antarctica, but no real permanent stations were established then. Even New Schwabenland. Even though Germany did organize an expedition to a place Norway had already claimed, whether Germany had established a permanent secret base there or not is unknown. There still could have been a temporary base there, but all this falls apart by 1945. It was the British in 1943 that wanted to go in and really start claiming land. Word got out, then the Chilean government wanted some land too. Then Australia, then the US, then the Soviet Union and France, and then comes the Antarctic Treaty. Because the next thing you know, you're going to have all these countries fighting over land, screwing up the land, and killing a bunch of people in the process. Countries could go in and build stations, but if a country wants to decommission a station or stop using it, they would have to remove it completely and restore the land to its original state. So now that we have this understanding of the continent, well, at least some, let's take a look at some of the anomalies that exist, or at least people have claimed to exist there. The first anomaly that anyone can see in Antarctica are actually the mountains. 
The fact that Antarctica has so many mountains under the ice and many peaking above the ice, if the ice sheet is millions of years old, as mainstream scientists claim, many of those mountains should have eroded away by ice erosion. But they haven't. Maybe I'm wrong. Vostok Station just happened to be built over Lake Vostok. It, it was an accident, I promise it was. What on God's green earth gave them any indication that there was a large lake two miles beneath the station? Well, a Russian geographer looked at the site and said, you know, this is one big flat plain of ice in this area. I wonder if there is a lake underneath it all. Not only is there a lake there, there is a magnetic anomaly there as well that they can't explain because they know what it means if they try. Looks like the Russians picked the prime location to set up base, similar to the U.S. McMurdo Station location, which is more like a small town than a station. Yet they wanted everyone to agree not to spoil the land. Anyway, what you have to understand here is that this environment is not hospitable to infectious diseases. Not just because of the weather. Obviously, if someone caught a cold and brought it onto the base, other people could catch the cold as well. But we are talking about an isolated location, free of these pathogens, ideally. In order to enter one of these bases, you have to be tested for these infections before you can go there. And then once you get there, you are quarantined for a few days before you can enter the population, according to policy. Oh, by the way... How do three dozen people get infected with COVID on the Chilean research station? You want to know where this place is? Look, this is where this place is. I want to laugh, but it is not really that funny. What in the world are they doing down there? Really? I know Chile is right there, but this is not hard. Anyway, the U.S. McMurdo station. Look at this place. They made a city. You know how much terraforming you have to do to build this place? So we all know that treaty was just a bunch of words on paper. Worthless at this point. Check this out. Does this look like they are holding down the treaty to you? Aren't they supposed to be doing research? I'm being facetious here, folks, but... What else would you expect from human beings? I mean, you guys know that they had a nuclear power plant there at one time. For a while, actually. They decommissioned it before the 80s, so no problem, right? Although, although, there are supposed to be no nuclear devices of any kind on the continent. Oops, I guess. So folks, take all that Antarctica is this pristine, clean environment. We don't want to contaminate anything. You can take all that and chuck it out the window. They have had infections on the bases. People have died. People have died and gone missing all over this continent. Considering the number of people that go there each year, I don't consider those very good odds. Well, now it's down to around one fatality per year. Many of these are due to freak accidents and crashes. McMurdo Station and that area have had several incidences, several involving fatalities. It might as well be haunted at this point. Remember Operation High Jump? Whether a UFO battle occurred or not, Admiral Byrd did take a significantly large fleet with him just to explore the continent, mainly around that area of the Ross Ice Shelf. McMurdo Station is in that area. There are a few people who believe that this Ross Ice Shelf could be a passage for UFOs, perhaps the South Pole entrance into a hollow Earth. Since the South Pole itself is covered in ice and now a dome, because the Ross Ice Shelf is just ice floating on water with holes, cracks, and crevices that lead to somewhere. How many of you have heard of the Martian meteorite that was found in Antarctica? Do you think it was an accident? Do you think it being found was an accident? First of all, 
Do you know what it takes to get a rock from Mars over to Antarctica by accident? That rock has to be moving at least 11,000 miles an hour just to leave the planet. So the story for all Martian rocks found on Earth is that an asteroid hit Mars and knocked off a bunch of debris into space, some of which ended up on the Earth and the Moon. And you know what? I'll give them that because the only other way to get Mars rocks here is to bring them here. So I'll give them that natural explanation due to the composition of the meteorites found. Although there has been much debate about the Martian meteorites found in Antarctica. The South Pole Admonson Station is now a dome covering the South Pole. I think they want people to come up with conspiracy theories. Want to see the inside? Sure you do. There are pyramid structures on the continent, much like the pyramid mountain structures we find in Australia or even California. There are maps that are centuries old that show Antarctica without ice. This ice being millions of years old is the one thing about this place that they absolutely will not dump. They really want to keep that idea alive for as long as they can because the ice is melting at an accelerating rate and these things will start to surface. Some very old things. Remember when I said this ice makes up 70% of the planet's fresh water? What do you think is going to happen when this fresh water mixes with seawater over time? That is an earth-changing event that affects the entire planet. Now, UFOs, or should I say spacecraft, sticking out of the ice are not hard to come by when researching this stuff. And I am sure there are people who want there to be some type of ship being uncovered by the melting ice. And I say if there were such a thing, why would it be sitting out in the open just to be snowed on? They had advanced aircraft, but they didn't have hangars, not even a garage. And I know what some people are thinking. What if it was a crashed UFO, huh? Well, you got me there. All I know is that there are UFO sightings over New Jersey. There is no place in the world devoid of this phenomena. And even if there was a crashed UFO in the ice, it does not mean it is from Antarctica. What about the face found in Antarctica, like the one on Mars? Well, not really like the one on Mars at all. This is a different face. Looks like a buried Decepticon. After all, they are more than meets the eye. But this can be explained away with pareidolia, just like with everything else. They have explanations for a lot of it, which are really just theories, opinions. Google Earth, of course, people have put out several images of strange structures found on the continent that almost never look like anything natural, but we could never conclude that they are artificial. So we have to wait to see what the melting reveals. Aside from that, there have been dozens of strange creatures discovered beneath the ice and around the continent. Very primitive species of animals. And then there are, of course, legends of larger beings. When I think about the Kraken stories off the coast of Antarctica or giant squids. And then you hear stories about Organism 46B that the Russians may have encountered. You have movies like The Thing and H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu creatures, which tops them all. The Shoggoths. Why is it that these Lovecraft monsters are probably the most common monster in many, many monster movies? I do not believe that whatever is hidden under the ice will be completely exposed anytime soon. However, I do believe that there will be enough melting to reveal several things that definitely confirm a civilization before the ice, making the age of the ice a straight up lie. That and maybe our origins. There is plenty more to come on Antarctica soon, so stay tuned. Until next time, be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com in the Woodward Entertainment Store. I do want to talk about this monster that we keep seeing over and over again. But until then, everyone, as always, stay awake, 
Stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.